Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regularly here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Now today it's more of a discussion. Should I pre-order the new Fujifilm XM5? And I really don't know. Now, I love new cameras and I love Fuji cameras. I already own the Fuji XS20 that we have here. Now, this is probably why I'm not so sure I really want to get the XM5. The XS20 has the same 26 megapixel sensor as the XM5 and the same processor. So the image quality, I'll go through a few of the images here. The image quality is going to be, uh, I would imagine, exactly the same as I get from my uh, Fuji XS20. And it is all dependent on what lenses you fit on the camera. But that would be the same with the XM5. Now, also, the XM5 has no in-body image stabilization where the XS20 has a three axis, a five axis image stabilization uh, in the body. So even if a lens doesn't have image stabilization, then the body will have it. For example, my Sigma 10 to 18, one of my favorite lenses I use with a Fuji system, and the 18 to 50 that I've got fitted to my X-H2 over there, has uh, no in lens image stabilization. So it's absolutely ideal that the, X, uh, the XS20 has uh, in body image stabilization. It's still really compact. I know the XM5 is going to be a bit smaller, but it has no viewfinder. The XS20 has a viewfinder, which is absolutely uh, awesome. So there are occasions when I do love to use a viewfinder as opposed to using the screen on the back of a camera. So do I really need the XM5? The only thing I'm really going to gain is its really compact size. Uh, and I'm going to be losing in-body image stabilization. Obviously, I could use both cameras, but um, I don't know. That's the XS20. But I also have the uh, Fujifilm X-T50 that we have here. Now, this is also very, very compact. In fact, it's beautifully styled. It's a gorgeous camera. I absolutely adore this camera. Um, now, this has in-body image stabilization, unlike the XM5, but it also has... Uh, it has the in-body image stabilization in the camera, uh, but it also has a viewfinder that the XM5 doesn't have. So it's got the in-body image stabilization and the viewfinder. This is kind of similar to the X106 because the X106 has a, well, a rangefinder style camera, but it has a viewfinder and it has the same processor as the X-T50 and the same sensor. The X-T50 um, which is extremely compact. Uh, it won't be as compact as the XM5, but it's extremely compact and it has the features that I need, which is in body image stabilization and a viewfinder. But also, I love the fact it's got the tilty wilty screen as opposed to the fully articulating screen. This isn't really designed for content creation as such, although it will do it quite nicely because it has got 6.2. Uh, open gate, 4K video, and all the other video features that you would expect, headphone jack, mic jack, and what have you. Um, so that's the X-T50. So really, I'm sort of answering my own question. I don't really need the XM5, because I've got the X-T50, which is the compact body, um, and I've got the XS20, if I want to put bigger lenses on, because it's got the much bigger grip. It's got a really nice grip, actually, on the uh, XS20. I do like that. And the longer battery life as well, we have to realize that. Um, the X-T50 has a W126 battery in, which is what the X-M5 will have. Uh, but the X-S20 has got the uh, W235 battery. I think that's what they call it. It's basically a bigger, a much bigger battery. It's very much like the Sony FZ100 battery. So it's a much bigger battery in the X-S20. So, um, I really don't think I'm going to be needing the XM5. Apart from that, it's a really, really compact little camera and a few other sort of vlogging features. I don't do vlogging, although the XS20 does have the fully articulating screen. They're both very, very similar and will produce very similar, if not identical, results. Also, there's a lot more function buttons on the XS20. Um, it's got a focus uh, joystick. Uh, it's just a much more all-rounded, general-purpose camera, and still pretty damn lightweight. Um, but the XM5 is also very similar in size and weight to the uh, Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, 
Also, the video features are very similar to the ZV E10 Mark II. And this is really compact. Uh, body only, this is 370 grams. I believe body only with the XM5 is 350 grams. So, you know, give or take, it's almost identical. So, um, yeah, the, again, the X, Z, uh, ZV E10 Mark II has the fully articulating screen. Um, E-mount lenses, obviously it doesn't take the Fuji mount lenses, uh, but E-mount lenses, um, and, you know, um, great for vlogging, great for video, 422 10-bit codex, the same as the XM5. Um, so, yeah, I think I've got what I need. But yeah, this is nice and compact uh, and produces very similar results. I think the size-wise as well is going to be virtually the same as the Fujifilm XM5. So, um, I just don't think it's very pretty. Uh, the Fuji is definitely a really, really attractive looking camera. Um, maybe that's what I'm attracted to it for, is it's, uh, you know, it's really pretty, where, you know, the X-T50 is a stunning looking camera. It's a really beautifully designed, really, really nice camera. You really feel like you want to go out taking photographs with the X-T50. And I've said in many videos, one of the features, key features I really love about the X-T50 is the auto switch on the top, just flick it down to auto, and I can go walking around, not worrying about setting the ISO shutter and uh, aperture range. So, yeah, very, very nice camera. Really, really nice camera. You've got your focus settings on the bottom there. Um, fairly normal for most Fuji cameras. So, uh, but as I say, this has got the 40 megapixel sensor. Now, if we have a quick look at um, images here, now these are from the XS20. Um, and even with the kit lens, these were taken with the 15 to 45 kit lens, the Mark I version, because there's now the Mark II version of the kit lens. I don't know, maybe I would imagine optically they're going to be very similar. I don't know. Um, but the optical quality of this kit lens is lovely. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's really, really good. Um, and then, you know, you look at uh, any images taken with the XS20, they're sharp. Colours are lovely, colours are really vibrant. The only real difference is its size. The XM5 is going to be a more compact camera than what the um, X-T50 is or the XS20. Um, but as I said, just said, it's going to be a very similar size to the, um, uh, the Sony ZV E10 Mark II. But I do like the grip on the ZV E10 Mark II. Apparently, there's no grip or very, very little grip on the XM5. So, you know, holding it for any, you know, long term, if you're out for a whole day, you might find it not very comfortable. I don't know yet, so I've never, I've not used it. But this is pretty comfortable, this one. I can tell, I can walk around all day quite happily with the uh, ZV E10 Mark II. Although, the knuckles will rub up against bigger lenses. It's okay with smaller lenses, like this lens, but I wouldn't want to put too large a lens on because I know my knuckles will rub up against the lens. There isn't a lot of gap between the lens and the grip on the ZV E10 Mark II. Um, whereas the XT50 doesn't really have a grip. It's got this contour um, around there, which is quite comfortable to hold. Don't have an issue with that. Um, seems pretty decent. Maybe the XM5 is going to be a similar grip to what the X, uh, XT50 is. I don't know. Um, one thing I can be sure of, but the image quality from the XM5 is going to be excellent because the XS20 is excellent. Likewise, if we take a look at the XT50, um, let's have a quick look at the XT50 here. Image quality is amazing with the XT50. Um, and also, uh, you can uh, crop in a lot tighter uh, on the XT50. If you do take uh, shots and you want to crop in tighter, particularly if it's wildlife or sports photographs and you want to crop in tighter to the action, you can do that with the X-T50 because of its 40 megapixel sensor. There's plenty of detail in that sensor to be able to crop into the image. Um, so, you know, uh, plenty of detail there to be able to crop into that if I so desire to do so. Um, so, yeah, both cameras are absolutely first class. Both cameras are, you know, um, are going to be really good. And again, even in difficult lighting conditions, the X-T50 really does hold its own. And I do like the 40 megapixel sensor. I also like the fact in both 
the XS20 and the XT50, they have in-body image stabilization. So you can set slower shutter speeds if you need to. Uh, and it just gives you a much more sharper, much more stable image. And great for video as well, because it does help to stabilize the video. So um, yeah, difficult question. Obviously the ZV-E10 Mark II is uh, very similar in price to the X, uh, XM5. And also this camera has no in-body image stabilization. Yeah, take a look at these images on my Flickr page. I'll leave a link to them on my Flickr page so you can actually um, have a look at the images from the X-T50 and the XS20 and uh, judge for yourself. And it says all various lenses. I've not used the same lens on all of these. That's taken on my Sigma 18 to 50 lens, uh, which again is a lens I use um, a lot, both the 18 to 50 and the 10 to 18. I think they're the only two lenses you really need because it covers from ultra wide right through to short telephoto portrait style lens. And it's a constant f2.8 aperture on both lenses. So yeah, great lenses and uh, some great cameras. Uh, I My favorite really is the X-T50 purely because I like the look of it. Um, and it's real compact size, uh, not as compact as the X-M5 because of a viewfinder. So there we go. That's my thoughts on the Fujifilm XM5. It's basically a cut down version of the XS20 without the image stabilization and without the viewfinder. So there we go, thanks very much. Hope you found this video interesting. Please subscribe uh, and hit the like button if you like the content of this video and share it if you think other people might find it useful. Thanks very much, cheers for now, bye.